Welcome to the KO Boxing Show. Massive show tonight. Highlights from Randy Ultratune's WBA world title win in Shanghai, China on a top-ranked promotion with Bob Arum and Manny Pacquiao in attendance. It's going to be massive. You're going to enjoy it. Also in the studio, Sean Buckley and Hisham Hanna. Back with Sean Buckley. Back with Sean Buckley. Sean, um, a special project we all invested in was a kid by the name of Randy Ultratune. Pedal core, and he, he wasn't born with a silver spoon in his mouth. He was born in the tough city of Davao and General Santos City, which is a, a, the place of Manny Pacquiao. We know it's, yeah. I mean, they get paid 30 or $40 a week there, manual labor, no one's really eating caviar. It's a tough type of place. And he came to Melbourne, he won hearts over, he's a humble kid, and you invested a lot of time into him and a lot of money. and. You must have been tickled pink when you saw him win the world title in uh, in Shanghai earlier or later this year in August. Yeah, it was great. And, you know, the uh, the kid, I lived in the Philippines in my early days for about two years, and uh, I really liked the Philippines uh, as a as a place. And uh, a lot of poverty over there, and nothing's really changed. And you know, you were you were very passionate about Randy, and uh, you know, you you really sold a good story to me about how good he could be. And I, you know. I, I wasn't sure what you were saying was correct, I've got to be honest with you. I thought maybe you were sort of um, being, exaggerating, being exaggerating a little bit. But really, everything you said about him and the investment we put into him was very satisfying um, for the company. And we were so, so thrilled, all of us were, watched him live and uh, uh, so thrilled that he uh, won that world title. You got to talk to him, he called you up. And yeah, he called me after the ride. I was supposed to be there, by the way, we remember, but I couldn't make it. Yep. And um, no, it was exciting that he won. And, I spoke to him and he did some altitude training with us, so it was good. So, you know, he's a, I, I think he'd be a very good champion. He's very dedicated. And I think, you know what, the, the thing is, if you come from a humble background like that, and you're hungry, you're hungry for money, okay? And sometimes the kids these days get born with a silver spoon in their mouth and they get lazy. You're in the Philippines earning $40 a day and you've got some skill fighting. Let me tell you, you want to make yourself a fighter. And, and Manny Pacquiao's done all the bla uh, trailblazing for that because he's, He's a, a, a benchmark. If, if you really work hard, you can make millions and millions of dollars. And I think that inspires a whole community of boxers through the Philippines. Sean, you're an international businessman. You're a successful businessman. And if there's a, a young person out there that's in uni or he's, say, 17, 18, 19 years of age and he wants to set himself up for life, I mean, you're not going to give away the... You can't tell us in five minutes, but what are the three key ingredients just, just to be successful, not to be a millionaire or, or, or you know, own companies, but what are the three ingredients you look for as an employer looking to hire someone? Well, hiring and, and being yourself, about having setting up companies are two different things, of course. Well, they've got to start somewhere, don't yeah, they? Yeah, they do. But I, th I think the most important traits in someone is not, is not brain power. Uh, I think it's intelligence, that's highly overrated. It's the desire to be successful. It's the desire to take setbacks and criticism and failure and bounce back from that, um, which is always hard emotionally. And I think the third thing is, is uh, people say to, you, say to me, how do, how do we make money? Well, it's not about making money, it's about doing something that you love and the money should flow from that. They're probably the three uh, things I, I find that are the most important. So if you're, not, if you're not passionate about something, just don't do it. You're never going to be successful at it. And it's structure's a big thing too, is it? You have to have everything structured or... Sometimes you just go by your gut feel. Oh, yeah. I've, I've, uh... Risks, you want to minimise the risks for people that have, you know, that balance where their capital's not great and they don't know whether to go the next step. What's your advice to people like that? Well, I think, look, I think it's, uh, you've got to understand that there's a lot of business investments that don't go right and the risk reward ratio is pretty, pretty, uh, not good in terms of investing like that. But in terms of uh, success and development of that, um, having an understanding of the problem, having an understanding about the opportunities, and then trying to, you know, in my opinion, trying then to give yourself 100% on that is the only way you can be satisfied that you're doing your best. And you know, I'm sure you've been a very successful boxing promoter. Uh, you're passionate about boxing, you love boxing. Um, I love everything in my business I love. If I didn't love it, I'd get rid of it. And you've got to be passionate to be successful. And that's what I keep coming back to. It's got to be passion and drive. There you go. For the young fellas out there, passion and drive. From Sean Buckley, the uh, really entrepreneur man, it's uh, 
It's like Donald Trump asking no. Donald Trump for a bit of no. advice. The Aussie version of Donald Trump. Come on, small, small version. Sean, yeah, no, the Aussie version. You're no. our Aussie version. Very well, you know, you're exaggerating my uh, abilities a little bit, Peter. Again, you're overselling. But, Jimmy um, Vegas <laughs> told me that. He never tells me a lie. So. No, I think that's good. Okay. Jimmy Vegas is a good guy. He's a great guy. Sean, wrapping up uh, Randy Ultratune pedal core, and he's part of Ultratune. He's done the Ultratune training. He's, he's ready to go. He's 22 years of age. You had some feedback from some Filipino workers that were working with you in Dubai when you mentioned his yeah. name. They, uh, they said a great kid. Yeah, they, they really liked him. They, uh, they, they knew about him. They knew that obviously Manny Pacquiao is a, is a champion of the, the world over there. And they know about him. They knew this guy was coming through. And they said, oh, we think he'll be a world champion very soon. And that was about eight months ago. And they, they were spot on, weren't they? Like you were. Oh, but, uh, so next so time you tell me a story, I'm not to believe you, and I don't think you're exaggerating. <laughs> you are on the ball. All right, Sean. Thanks for coming on. And before we sign you off, mate, Spring Carnival's here. We've uh, got a bit of a kitty going on, and we want a bit more for Christmas. A few uh, horses we should follow during the Spring Carnival. Okay, okay I'll be following Tigas. Um, in the races she runs in. Okay, I'll tear gas. And I'll be following uh, Hooked. Hooked? Yeah. Anyone up? And, uh... Oh, look, I'm not sure, because a few are going to run, but I'm just not sure. One's, a couple of good ones have got a few little niggling injuries. I'm not sure how they're going to come up, but those two are flying. So I expect Like the word run. flying? Yeah, low speed flying. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, thanks for being on the show, Sean, and all the best. And once again, congratulations. Outstanding service to the Boxing Award from the great man. Well done, mate, Thank and enjoy mate. the rest. Thanks, Peter. Back with Rod Sodaro from uh, Altitude Services. This is a new state-of-the-art facility, really, that all athletes should look into. Uh, Rod will tell us more about it. Rod, welcome to the Car Boxing Show. Yeah, thanks, Pete. It's always a pleasure to catch up with you. Um, yeah, look, we've um, been playing around with Altitude Services now for a little over 12 months. Um, we started off, we're part of the Ultra group of companies, um, Sean Buckley's group. Um, we've been predominantly up until now focusing on the equine athlete, horses. We've had a number of horses go through. Um, probably our most successful being Seamus Award, who won the Australian Guineas and the Cox Plate, as you're well aware, and Seamus is off to stud now. Um, we've got about 20 altitude stables currently up and functioning with um, Sean's horses uh, with different trainers around Australia. Um, my background is as a human exercise physiologist. Um, and I sort of brought the idea of altitude trainer Sean probably about 10 years ago, a little bit slow on the uptake. Um, but we've finally got there. Um, we're now looking at diversifying into some of the, the more the, the human athletes that we're, we're dealing with. We've got a couple of hotels we're proposing up in Queensland. Um, so the whole idea being to sleep the athletes high and then train low so you get the benefit of um, the altitude exposure, but you can still train hard enough to get the benefits. Um, and we've got a altitude pool cover up in Queensland as well, so at a 50 metre pool cover, so the athletes can swim at up to three and a half thousand metres for their training sessions. So rather than having to go to Boulder, Colorado or Flagstaff, Arizona to train, they can actually do it all on the Gold Coast. And most of the scientific literature that's coming through now from places like the AIS, etc., is saying if you can get a combination of heat stress with altitude, that's where you're going to get your most benefit from. Randy Altitude Pedal Core, and he recently won a WBA world title. That was in Shanghai. It was based in front of the whole world, 15,000 people. He's benefited from this altitude training, and he's only 22 years of age. Can he get better and better from that? Look, generally what we, we say is most people will benefit from altitude training. It's, it's not as though it's going to turn a donkey into a Group 1 winner, but what it does is at that elite level where your Seamus Awards are and your Randys are, it gives you that 1% to 3% performance difference. Now, that might not sound like a lot, but if you've got a horse that's racing over 1,000 metres, that 1% is 10 metres. That's a difference between first and last. And it's the same with an athlete like Randy. It's not going to make him go harder, but what it's going to allow him to do is it's going to allow him to sustain the effort for longer. So instead of you know, staying to struggle midway through the eighth, you'll be getting midway through the ninth and finishing the fight before you know, the, the fatigue start, really starts to set in. So what it does is it allows an athlete just to go for that, long, that longer at their optimal ability levels. Sleeping inside an altitude barrier, how, much, uh, how comfortable is it for starters? I mean, you can't have a... Mate, it's a late a, night snack inside those barriers, can you? <laughs> well, it's a little bit hard for the horses. They can't get out of the night time. But um, with the humans, they can unzip the, the chamber, 
and jump out if they've got to go to the loo. Um, they, look, they're usually very, very comfortable. Um, we've got um, Susie Ramadan, who's fighting for a world title in Mexico City in a couple of weeks' time. Uh, Susie's using one of our chambers at the moment, um, predominantly because she's going from sea level and she's fighting at, at altitude, and she'd be at a distinct disadvantage if she didn't take advantage of the altitude training. But um, no, Susie's finding it really comfortable. All we did was um, we took one of our altitude tents over there, pulled the mattress off her bed, slid it into the tent. Um, so there's really no difference for her. We've put in one of her spare bedrooms, put in a couple of um, hypoxic generators to it, cooled the room down a little bit for her, and she's sleeping like a baby at the moment. Fantastic, great work, and all the best to Susie there too in Mexico. Rod, um, what are some of the advice you'd like to give to young athletes with altitude? Is it expensive? I mean, how, how does some guy that just wants to improve his time around the tan or something by a, a little bit and he's no professional athlete, is any benefit for him? Oh, absolutely. Um, we actually find that for athletes that are, you know, getting close to their peak, so your elite athletes will get less of a return from it because they're already you know, really pushing the envelope with their fitness, et cetera. Whereas um, someone else who's coming into um, as a novice athlete, et cetera, is gonna probably experience even bigger advantages. In fact, where we think the biggest market is for altitude training isn't necessarily with athletes, although it's obviously a benefit to them. We're looking at the weight loss market. Um, there's a lot of literature around at the moment that shows that if an athlete or if a person sleeps at altitude, they get a release of a certain hormone called leptin, which suppresses appetite, and you actually increase the person's resting metabolic rate. So they burn calories a lot faster as well. So. Joe Average out there is certainly going to get a benefit from it in relation to cost. That's me, Joe Average. Yeah, I need to go. lose a bit of weight. Oh, well, there you go, Pete. You yeah. will have to lend you a tent. Yeah. Um, and what, that's the other thing we're looking at doing. At the moment, most of the scenarios around is you go out and you buy a tent and you buy a, um, a generator in order to, to use it. We're looking at a, um, a lease arrangement or a hire arrangement, which I think will make it a lot more cost effective for people. Gee, this is fantastic work here, Rod, especially backed up by Sean Buckley too after winning that outstanding service to the Boxing Award. He's on fire, Sean, and I'm sure these new projects that you guys are coming into, mate, the AFL football clubs, they've got to snap them up, especially with players that want to sleep in uh, tents and stuff like that just to get over injuries as well, because I hear it's pretty good getting over injuries as well. Yeah, look, at what it does, Peter, again, is it allows you to sustain your fitness while you're down with a, a soft tissue injury or something. I suppose the, one of the big things is that um, we hear about you know your Collingwoods etc. that are jumping on a plane at the end of the season. They're flying over to um, Flagstaff, Arizona etc. And they're dropping one. I'm a Collingwood one supporter, you're making me depressed. No one wants to play for us anymore. <laughs> there, it's a mass no exodus. No one's leaving club. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit that way. I was listening to the Dwayne Swan and um, Eddie Maguire this morning talking about. Playing them with counterfeit dollars or something. <laughs> going, well, what they're doing, mate, is they're right? spending all their money going over these altitude camps. You know, they're dropping one 1.2 mil a year going over to altitude. So you, you fly from Australia to, say, Boulder, Colorado. You're through four or five different time zones. You train over there for a period of time. What happened with Carlton last year was it was they had a late winter over there, so they couldn't actually get outside and do a lot of their ball work. Um, so I did some general conditioning work over there. They then came back to Australia. The benefits of altitude training will persist for maybe four to six weeks when you get back from altitude. So you get this decrement back to where you started from. So for me, I don't understand why you would go and spend that sort of money. What we're proposing to do is to bring the altitude closer to home. So you can go up there on multiple occasions during a year. If we've got on, say, the Gold Coast, you get the heat stress plus the altitude, costs you a tenth of what it's going to cost you to go over the other side of the world to train, and you can go back on multiple occasions to top it up, and you're living in five-star accommodation. Sounds good to me. And Don Scott is a big fan of the show. Don, we're going to bring more Asian fighters in. We, we know that Howard Lee told me that you like the Asian fighters and what have you, and Don Scott saved Hawthorne when they were going to merge with Melbourne. So. He's tickled pink after the hawk has got the flag. Thanks for coming on the show. Pete, always a pleasure. And uh, keep up the outstanding work, mate. The Thanks, same with Sean. Thank you. Back with Hisham Hanna. He's a super promoter, part of Shamrock Events, management company as well. You've got a massive show December 12, mate. I know it's a little while away, but uh, some big names on the card. Yeah, we've got um, Tas Tassiris as the main event versus Jordan Tai. Jordan Tai is a household name. He's fought Steve Moxon a couple of times. So this is a preparation for Tas to see 
how he goes and for his rematch with Steve Moxon later in the year. Got a huge undercard. We've got Chase Hellboy Haley, also part of Shamrock Management. Um, Arita Gilbert, Kane Clark, Daniel Serene, Steve Baldacino, Richard Tom. We've got Burak Hassan coming back. I know Burak's one of your favourites. Yep. Um, yeah, so I'll crack our line up again. So Kings of Combat 14, Friday, December 12. There's going to be food and drinks at the venue as yep. well at, yep. the, at the Springers. Yeah, What's the address there at Springers? 400 Cheltenham Road, Keysborough. So it'll be a nice one. What time does it normally kick off? Look, it normally kicks off seven sharp. The doors open at six, so... Yeah. Gee, it's going to be a big, big night. Yeah. Let's talk about your job here at Ultratune because you're proudly part of Ultratune. You're the International Business Development Manager. Yes. Tell me, I feel you, you worked at SWEPS and you've worked at Cadbury and you've also worked at... Well, look, uh, I started my career at um, uh, um, Billy Guides, which was like a Harvey Norman. Then I ventured into Vodafone. I was an area manager. Then Cadbury SWEPS. Then Parmalat, which was a milk company, Rev Physical Skinny Milk. Um, I'm helping Sean out with Ultra Tuna international side of things. He's got stores in Dubai, etc. Um, we're also going to branch out to other countries. Um, visited Singapore with him not long, long ago. So I'm helping him out with Ultra Tuna, also altitude training. Spoke to Rod Pryor. Mm. And of course, like you said before, Sean sponsors the grassroots athletes, and that's what he does for kickboxing as well. I mean, Kings of Combat 14, we owe it to him. So, yeah. How do you find working at say a company like Ultratune and then putting on events dealing yeah. with people because they're diverse type of people in the kickboxing and yeah. boxing world it's different to the business world isn't it well look it is but the, what the, are the, the, principles? The, the, the business world look the principle is is a structure I'll follow a structure and people are people dealing with people I guess is it's an international language and I believe deal with others as you'd like to be dealt um, I try respect. to do the best yeah respect I try to do the best by everybody at times I've been told I might do a little bit too much or too good, but I love the sport and that's just the way I want to keep it up. Great work, yeah. mate. And also you mentioned that no contracts at Shamrock events. The old style handshake and, yeah. and a wink and <laughs> she'll be, you know, she'll be right. Well, if the boys want to be with me or the girls, they want to be with me. Lovely. I don't want to ever hold them there if they don't want to be there. A bit like a marriage. A bit like a marriage. There you yeah. go, Peter. All right. Thanks a lot for coming on the show, Hisham, and uh, all the best in this event. December 12, Springers, there's going to be food, there's going to be drink there. Yeah. The fights are going to be great. A few of my favourite fighters are going to be on there, and uh, I'm sure it's going to be a cracking night, mate. Thank you, Peter. Cheers, Always mate. a pleasure to see you. Thank you, guys. Now, that special footage we promised of yours, Randy, Ultra Tune, Pedal Corin. He fought recently on a top ranked promotion in Macau. Bob Aaron was a promoter, Manny Pacquiao was ringside, Freddie Roach was ringside. Let's go straight to the highlights.
up to KO Box Show, I'd like to thank all our guests. Massive thank you to Sean Buckley for winning the award, outstanding service to boxing. Big thumbs up to Randy Ultra Tune Pedal Corum for winning the world title. And also big thumbs up to Hisham Hanna. So till next week, keep punching. Mm -hmm.